What's up out there, everybody? David Cravens with the Relentless Hope Podcast. When I go to get a new pair of sunglasses, there's only one sunglasses I choose, and that's Nevin Eyewear. We're proud affiliate and sponsored by them, and that's all you'll see us wearing. They're ready for land, air, or sea. If you break them or lose them, they replace them. Go there today, nevineyewear.com. More choices than you can shake a stick at. So don't forget, Nevin Eyewear. I know my lady and I'm feeling pretty good. Still pushing hope from the sea. Hey, what's up out there, everybody? David Cravens with the Relentless Hope Podcast. Down here at the 239 Uncensored Studios with sunny Southwest Florida. There you go. <laughs> Got my beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Savage on, wife. What's up, everybody? What's your name? My name is Jonna. She tries to forget. <laughs> well, she don't try to forget Jonna, but someday she tries to forget the Cravens part. You know what I mean? That's a lie. Yeah, I'm a just lie. playing. How you doing, babe? I'm great. How about We're you? down here. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be back in the studio. It's been a crazy month down here in Florida, all the way up through the Carolinas. Our hearts still go out to everybody that's been affected by them crazy hurricanes. You can't um, understand it unless you've been part of it, you know. So our prayers are still with them. We've got um, D-Money over there on the hey. control. I know you miss us, D-Money, over here saying, come on, we need this set up. Hey, D, come on, come on. She's like, where's where's Larry Love at? He ain't asking me to set all He's this stuff up. Maintenance. What's going on? No, shout out to Larry Love and Pat Gira for the politicking, man. We've been watching you guys. Good job. Good job. John Huffman, everybody who does their podcast here. Um, Mr. Tim Jarrett, MIA, I think he's out on a spy mission or something. I don't know where he's at, but, um, so today we got some guests that are, um, not just guests, but they're both special to my heart because dang, am I crying already, man? Jeez. Um, I'm 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 softer than cotton, man. But, uh, I mean, he's on, but I'm soft, man. (laughs) But, um, no, I'm just playing. God changed my heart. That's why I ain't so hard hearted anymore. But both of these people, um, this couple that we got on here today came in my life at different mm-hmm. at different times where I didn't know a lot of people or um, neither one of them, and especially um, C's didn't judge me when I was going through some stuff, and a lot of people shunned me when you know I was going through divorce or whatever the case was. Mm-hmm. So we got C's and Diamond up in here. The up, up? See, I'm what's not as good up? as you introducing your wife than I am. It's like. Uh, my beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get go. your wrestling voice. Go. <laughs> Do it in Spanish, yeah. bro. My beautiful. I don't know. My inner you... macho man. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, guys? I'm man, good, man. Too man, too man. it's what's been good? a been a while since we've seen you guys. Yeah. Which is um, that's what life does, though, right? Sometimes life get you got kids, sure. you get married, you got jobs, um, yeah, you're moving, bro. uh, you know. Cars break down, yeah. bills are due, and then you got right. another kid. You know what I mean? And then, and all of a sudden, before you know it, it'd be three years before we've seen each other or whatever. Life we've seen life. each other in passing a couple of times. You know, like we've seen, we seen you. I haven't seen you for a while, though. Yeah. It's, I think rock, the fight bro. was the last time. Yeah, I've been under a rock. Yeah. Bro. Well, get, man, and I, didn't, I told you, man, I didn't get a hold of you like a big brother should. And vice versa. And it's vice a two way street, man. you know? And that's same thing. Bookstore. Yeah, we see. Yeah. That's what we seen you. That's Greg's why. Books, and the one thing I said when we seen you, Greg, I go, Diamond's ha- Diamond has a whole different countenance on her, oh, yeah? which is yeah. Jesus, well, right? Thank you, Jesus. And, and again, yeah. this is the thing about us on this podcast. If you're looking for your cookie cutter, normal religious podcast, mm-hmm. this ain't this ain't this. Ain't but if you're looking for here. a podcast where two broken individuals, you know, Jesus can change your life and you can be a success, then this is the podcast, right? Amen. So, that's what's um. Yep. Going back how I met UCs was, I guess it was back in the um, Night of the Crown days, both of you yeah. guys. Yeah. Is, is Come where, on life. Oh, Robert. Yeah. Remember Robert? Robert yeah, Robert, Robert Baggard. Robert I think I said your name for wrong for about 10 years, buddy. I'm sorry. Your last name. I do love you. I know you got mad at me when you worked for me. I'm sorry. I was a jerk. But um, He's maybe you were lazy. Ways. No, I'm just kidding. I've changed my ways. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Good changed Lord. my heart. No. But... Uh, <laughs> Well, this is going to be a funny podcast. But uh, and um so we were at Night of the Crown. Right, you right. you were like rapping big time. You were doing your thing. You were freshly saved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, you, the faith. Yeah, you you had so been new. They wouldn't let me rap cuz I still had cuss words. Yeah, you still had cuss words. You had your little demo where you were down like yeah. and and what are you from Miami? 
Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina, North originally. North but Carolina. then you had been in Miami, Miami and you came yeah. here. Yeah. yeah, right? See, y'all remember? I got a good memory. Yeah. I ain't yeah. never smoked too much weed, but I did a lot of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh but um, and then met C's. That was kind of the clip then, right? Yeah. yeah. And what a, pe- a lot of people don't know for me, I had moved to Florida in 08, I think. Mm-hmm. Late 07, 08. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. And, you know, I had came off some success Christian rapping. Mm-hmm. But when I got down here, like I would try to go to churches and get plugged in. And it's crazy because nobody remembers this except Greg and Bridge. But it was Greg, Bridge, Judah, and Anthony were a music group right, right, when right. I first moved here. Like I'm talking like 2009, something. Like, and we did Paul Adada's CD release party. Somehow he heard that I it's rapped. Been that long. Yeah, somehow That's he heard that I rapped. Time. So I remember coming there and and no shots at anybody. The only person that talked to me out of them no shade. was Greg. No shade. Wow. Was Greg. And and now I've talked to all of them since then, you know what I'm saying? Right. But as a dude who was like, I was so excited because I had been down here for a year, a year and a half. The only people that showed me love was like drug addicts wow. i'm not trying to be funny but yeah. like i went to church i kind of was like trying to get some help you know like get locked in and right, right. i moved pool table so i ended up in a bar what do you mean <laughs> hey man the guy's like hey you can come over my house i'm like well hey, nobody else invited me why not that's hey. what happens in the world that's what happens sometimes that's you know true. and um but i remember going to this event to rap and um they were there and i was uh, so excited wow. now now fast forward none of them dudes knew like my past of how long I had been doing this, like opening up for T-Bone, touring with the gospel gangsters. Like none of them knew that, right? (laughs) Nobody knew that stuff. And nor did I go in and say that. I was just excited to meet like, oh man, yeah, God did this. And they were kind of rude to me. No, no shade. I love all you guys now, but Greg talked to me. So that started me and Greg's little relation, you know, relationship. And then soon met Jeriah. Soon met you guys. Taking the city and, and all of them. They were doing the taking the Shout city. Shout out to Jirila. Yeah, yeah, big Jirila. I tried to get a hold of you, bud. You didn't call me back, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, I recently um, just saw him. Um, he was at um, uh, taking the city base. Yeah. And I ain't seen him in like he, eight years. Yeah, he said he, last yeah. time we saw each other was at your football game. Um, the, the part. Oh, uh, the, the the fight. Fight. At fight. Your house. Yeah. Oh, oh, my wow. So wow. That's, yeah, that was, uh, that's 2000. That's Conor McGregor and Diaz, too. Wow. That was Diaz Gregor, too. 13, that was the last 14? time we saw yeah, him. That was, Are you long, serious? that was like 08. Yeah. No, no, not 08. 18. Probably. No, it's 2016. 16. Yeah. 16. Wow. 16. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Man, that's that was crazy. nine years ago. You know, when he left that day, he called me. That was the last time I talked to Jeriah. Oh, well, not I mean I've talked to him like in text, but he called me and said, Bro, I just left the base and um I seen C's and Diamond and wow. Greg, man. He said it was like a homecoming, bro. Whoa. He yeah. was so joyful was pumped, to see yeah. everybody, you know. Yeah. And um, man, you can't take away that time that what we were doing yeah. Yeah. though you know and um i think we all myself i'm saying that we kind of washed it under the like oh we just took it for granted yeah. kind of hey yeah. we show up we had a place to rap al kempa god bless al shout out to you al. know who, and then we got to do y'all music video hollywood that's yeah. what we did oh, yeah. that, that's leading up to that <laughs> yeah, no I'm hollywood so yeah. People people don't know, but if you go watch her, Jackson was a baby. Now he's gonna yeah. be driving crazy, wow. right? One of my he was the, the, he was the intro. Yeah, the intro. he was he was yeah. just like little doughboy, right? Yeah. And then you just kind of killed it with the oh. MC in it, like here we are. I just listened yeah. to it the other day wow. and watched it, bro. I do it every once in a while. But um, yeah, no Hollywood. And that was a couple killed years it. on because soon after I met you guys, John and I, you know, started talking and you know, people were saying whatever, and here they are, you know, you look at us all these years later. But um, so I met you guys. C's was doing music big time. Yeah, you yeah, were staying busy, man. I um, you know, I have a co- catalog of about maybe a hundred songs, bro. It's a lot of them unreleased, and um, I had a Reverb Nation, and we would kind of like, uh, you know, you're number one, and you're number one now. I'm yeah. number one now. It's yeah, like, <laughs> it's a forth. little friendly competition. No, yeah, man, no, but, it was good. Yeah. But it was um, it kept me on my toes. It kept him, you know, on his toes, and uh, I just love that. It's just you never know what you're gonna go through life that you're never gonna look that, that you're gonna look back on and be like, wow, that was a special moment. Right. And um, that the couple life days. Mm. Yeah, I miss those days. Man. And, and, days. And then thank God Al opened his doors and yeah. did all that. Just a great guy. I talked to him still. Talked to him not too long ago. He he moved away. He's a great dude. 
He and got married. Yeah, he got did. married. He, got he used to work for me too. Shout out, Al. I was a jerk, <laughs> but uh, I ain't the easiest guy to work for. Ask this girl. The Lord Ask this did the work. The Lord did the work. Yep, he's doing it. <laughs> but um, so and then then Diamond, you started coming. Like I said, you were new in the faith, but you like like C's has got like this New York Nas mm-hmm. type yeah. flow, and I'm just like you know I just put some words on four four time and. I could rock the house, but other than that, I'm a lot better to watch live than drive around and listen to. <laughs> but um, but you guys, you're you're an MC, bro. Like, you know what I mean? That's what yeah, I always yeah. said. Like, I'd be like, you gotta listen to Caesar's song. Mm-hmm. I do anyway, a couple times, and be like, oh, I didn't realize he That's just what he said, said that. Lyrical. Oh, that was good. Oh, mm-hmm. And then you brought this whole flavor. Like, you were probably hands down. You two were the best rappers there, For and, sure. and you were a female, so she was like the. The female, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So she would yeah, get in. She's, and, she's and first I, lady. And, yeah, she was the first lady of it, Night on the Crown. And then I remember Jonna coming to watch me rap yes. there. And we were just yeah. like talking. Yeah. And then then we had the prayer thing, uh, Kia David. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. remember yeah. all that? David, wow, yes. You remember that? Yeah, yes, she was coming that. there all the time. Yeah, I, I didn't spent know. many a nights in prayer. Yes, I mean, all night. Wait, who Tell was, what we remember though. Who was the one laughing? <laughs> we remember <laughs> the one time we got in trouble. Sorry, it, Greg. No, it was me know. and Jerila. It was you and Jerila. We always get in trouble. Me and Jerila. He, he always say, "I remember those nights we used to pray." Yes. I said, "I remember those nights we used to fall asleep." Yeah, <laughs> and I remember one like, time we were all there. I love you, Diamond. But I remember one time we were all there praying and done. Diamond was like, <laughs> "Oh, <geez. laughs> I'm like, good. I don't feel so bad. I'm yeah. taking a nap. This going on. I think the Holy Ghost wait, got wait, off three call, stops ago. We sleep. keeping this bus going. <laughs> yeah, Greg used to be like, don't fall asleep. And he'd be asleep. Like, yeah, you <laughs> asleep too. You sleep, Greg, yeah. you'd be asleep driving across the bridge. What are you talking about? We called it slaying and sleeping in the Lord. <laughs> yes. And then right after, it was what's so crazy is that we was awake enough to go to Denny's right afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> we had some. Those, you know, those were all good times, and, and that a lot of things you guys don't know. My life stuff I was going through just bad. Adeline. So that core, you know, you, Jerila, Greg, you know, and then Diamond. Um, who else did we have over there? Uh, C True, Colton. Yes. Remember Colton? Yeah, Colton. He, Colton worked for me for a little while too. We the only ones that ain't work for. Hey, I know, I'm gonna need on. you guys to get in the van. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can do it. We'll see you tomorrow morning. But um, Gianni, and Greg worked for me too. Gianni, at one time. But um, G-Kong, yeah, G Kong. G Kong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. how can we forget G Kong? <laughs> oh man. So that whole time, Jericho, of course, I still yes. talk to Jericho. Yeah, it was all good. the time. Yeah. Yeah, he, I talked to him all the time, Such a man. Great guy. I love that dude. It, it, just that whole time, though, we were just awesome. And, and I was kind of the oldest dude of the group then, mm-hmm. as I'm still the oldest guy now, but I'm um, still doing it. But it was like camaraderie for me, too. And then mm-hmm. seeing you guys, you know, getting a hold of you, just getting saved and what you came out of, and you can share what you want and what you don't as we get into it. And then I remember when you guys first started dating, and then you came to the studio, oh, and we man. did a song with your <laughs> ride. I want to say. With the little key. I want to say this. <laughs> yeah. One thing, one thing that I admire about you is you've always been a supporter. Yeah. You was like, yes. I was like, I, I was like, I can't get in the studio. You was like, I pay for it. Yeah. I was like, I don't have no cover. I pay for it. <laughs> like, he was always like, I'm behind you 100. percent So, you've always been there supporting yeah. us and anything we wanted to do. Yeah. You was down for it. So yeah. you've always you've been that, that person to this day. Yeah. I, you, you know, my lights never got dimmed by brightening somebody else's. Yeah. And if more people knew that, and that's where I get disgusted in the Christian hip hop game now. And, and 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 I'm not saying everybody, but you know, from seeing what I've seen, a lot of people be like, "Yeah, man, I got." It. But if you don't benefit them, yeah. they ain't down with you. Right, right. You know, right. one thing, and I can say about her, and 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 the reason, you know, me and her, her and I, I'm trying to work on my grammar. I can't tell my kids to work on You're their grammar. Good, you can't talk. It is there's no motive in her heart, just the same way as mine. So, mm-hmm. it's like. I, I'm all about seeing somebody else win, yeah. but but because you can't lose if somebody else yeah. wins, man. That's true. And and if we were like that in every aspect of life, not just a music thing, but it's really bad in music because because yeah. it's, it's even bad, bad podcasting. Bad. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to share yours because you're going to take your followers. I'm oh, like, wow. who who cares, it's man? Like who, there's there, you know it, we're just out here talking, and if if it's for good, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you. So I I appreciate that. Yeah. And then you guys started dating, and then um. You know, you guys are doing good, and then you broke up for yes. a while, yes. and you were doing yes. good. <laughs> and then, you know, playing the whole beginning thing, you know, and all of that. And then you guys got married, which then we'll go back, and you, I want you to tell yeah. about your life. Of course. And then 
John and I was obviously married. And then for a while, you, we were together. A lot. I mean, you guys came to every fight because we were getting fights yeah. all the time. And, and we stayed in contact. Remember a lot. we all went to the melting pot? We went to the melting pot. We were just talking about we it. Y'all was? Yeah. We was on the way here. We he was like, uh, he said, I'm hungry. I he was, was like, like <laughs> I, he said, in the car, he was like, I'm hungry. So I'm hungry. So he was like, remember the time we went to the melting pot? I was like, well, I remember that time. But I also remember after the melting pot, we went to Burger King. I remember you telling me that. He said, the experience was awesome. But I'm still. So C's, let's start with you. Yes, sir. No, let's start with Diamond. Ladies first. Okay, let's right, do this. First. There you go. Let's start. No Tell pressure, a little no bit pressure. of like, you know, you and you not to go crazy because you know you're on time limit. So you want to munch it in as much. You don't have to, but share what you want. If it goes on, yeah. it goes on. That's right. But we don't we don't cut down no times if we have to. Okay. We ask it whatever. But. So tell a little bit about, you know, where you were born, a little bit of your childhood, and bring us up how to you ended up here. You know okay. what I mean? Turn that. I'm going to try to sum that up. Yeah. So um, I was born in Greensboro, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, mainly my, 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 my mom was in jail. My dad was pretty much raising me, but he was pushing me out for my grandmother. So a lot of times I was at my grandmother's house, and then God blessed me with a godmother. And she began to take me in and show me just a whole new experience of life, taking me to Disneyland, Disney World, and things like that. So that was really... That's really the golden years of my my childhood where I have her to thank today because she showed me that there's a uh basically there's another side of life that you can wow. have besides like be, being abandoned that you don't have to even though you even though your your family is not your mom and dad are not with you I can st God put me in your life to be that mom and father that right. you need and they took right. me in and I thank God for them because without them I don't think I'd be the person that I am today so shout out yeah shout, shout out, out my God, Evelyn mother. Evelyn and Keith they were my, my strong found hold and all. I'm so nervous. That's don't all right. Nervous. You do you, girl. Yeah. So, it's okay. We so, cry here. You yeah. start crying, I'll yeah, we cry. Keep it real. Amazing. Yeah, that's um, just what it is. Yeah. But um, That shows mom, there's a God. So my yeah. mom got out of prison, and she was like, I want my daughter. She came to my um grandmother's house. My dad wasn't there, and she was just like, I was on the porch playing, and she was like, come here. A car pulled up, and she was like, you want to go to Florida? And I was like, course, yeah. yeah. I Let's didn't go. know what was going on. So I was like, yeah, I want to go. And then. Next thing you know, I'm in the car out in Florida. A day that went by, my grandma called everybody looking for me. My dad's like, where you at? I was like, oh, I'm in Florida with my mama. You in Florida? Your mama didn't oh, tell me she Lord. was taking you away. <laughs> From that day on, I've been a Floridian. Uh, we was in Miami for a little bit. That's why I really learned to hustle mm -hmm. and, you know, get out here and get it out of the mud. And then I came to Fort Myers. Oh, and my mama moved to Pine Manor. Mm -hmm. Pine Manor. You know about Pine Manor? Pine Manor. Yeah. Girl, that's, I know that's, about that's Pine Manor. Yeah, they, they call it crime Manor. Crime, crime Manor. So yeah. I think I learned how to really hustle. So I started dabbling in drugs and selling it and things like that, making them own friends and just really just discovering, like, you know, what that life was about down right. here. Because when, when Miami, Miami's fast, too, but my mom shielded us from the street life in Miami. But mm -hmm. when I came down here, it was like we was on the streets. And you were getting but, a little older, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Meeting a lot of people and stuff, and then by by the time high school came, I was already in homosexuality, drug addict, addicted to Xanax, mm -hmm. smoking weed every day. Even when my mom had found um, the first time my mom found out I was doing drugs, the age of sixteen, she had found um, weed in my pocket, mm -hmm. and she was it was in the laundry mat, and she was washing my clothes, and she found a whole bunch of weed, and she was like, "Come here!" And I went uh -uh. in, and I thought I'm gonna get in trouble, and she's like. Girl, why you didn't tell me you had weed? I could have been buying it from you. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. So from that day forward, it just put me on a path of like, you know, when my mom that's knows, yeah, I can, I'm, I'm going to get money. That's out normal. Money. That's right. how it's supposed to be, right? Yeah. Start doing drugs, start selling it. And then I would say by senior year, I was, I had lost a lot of weight and I didn't know why. I don't know if it was from the Xanax or from me just doing mollies and things like right. that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I came to a pivotal point where I was like, Lord, I've been in, in a relationship with these females and mm -hmm. it just seemed like, I don't I don't know what's happening to me, but I feel like I'm losing my mind and I feel like I'm gonna die. Right. And I don't know and nobody could save me. I couldn't go to my mom. I couldn't go to nobody. So I was on my it was like one night I was at um in my bedroom on the floor and I knew that it was like I kept seeing these signs of something was gonna happen and I was afraid. I didn't know how to be saved. I hadn't been to church in a while and I was just like, you know what, Lord, save me. And I went on my computer and typed how to be saved and it's the craziest wow. thing. Wow. The crazy That's how bad you wanted it. Yeah, he he knew he knew in my own terms how he was gonna save me. So I typed in how to be saved, Christian rap and all that stuff, and Lecrae popped up, Lecrae mm. Hallelujah song. Oh, yeah. yeah, and I was like, wow, like I didn't know we had Christian rap. Like I I knew nothing about this, so I started listening to Lecrae and plugging in, and then God just began to put people in my path. That very next day, I was sitting out on this green um, pavilion, and this lady who I'd never seen in my complex came up to me, and she was like, 
um, you want to go to a three-day revival with me? And I was like, what? what? I was like, that's crazy, because last night I just prayed to God, oh, and, he, and she was just like, yeah, I feel like you should come to me to this three-day revival. I went with her, and the, that three-day revival was tough, because I was throwing up a lot of stuff. God was really delivering me. But oh, after yes. that... He ended up plugging me in with uh that's how I, I think that very next week I ended up going to a couple life mm. and meeting um seeing him and Greg and uh what's his name? Um G Kong. Not G Kong. It was uh anyways, um he ended up prophesying over me. His what's his name, man? I can't think of it now. It's like I got brain fart. Um he's a rapper, the country rapper, uh Jericho? Jericho. 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 Yeah. Shout Jericho. out Jericho. <laughs> Sorry, Jericho. Again, I got the brain for all you these always, on me. You always getting shouts out on here, boy. You better share this one. Oh, God, so, he pro- so Jericho prophesied over me. He was saying wow. something like, God God is gonna, God gonna, has God's speed on your life and that he was going to deposit so much knowledge in me that, it, that I'm going to be quick. That he's going to quicken in me and that I'm going to um, know so much knowledge. And as I began to watch you, got, watch him and G. Rain and everyone perform on stage, I used to tell God, I want to rap. They were telling me, you're not ready yet. You don't have the word in you enough to rap. Mm. <laughs> I say about three months later, I was on stage rapping, yeah. preaching the gospel, and it just felt like his wow. glory was on me because that, that's how I started reaching you guys, mm-hmm. and God was just connecting me with everyone that was like, we want you to be a part of this. We want you to do that. And ever since then, I, I saw my husband. I saw this Puerto Rican on stage, and I was like, hey, who that is? <laughs> Puerto Rican, five <laughs> breathing said, Puerto Rican. Did you really? I did. So I seen him rapping on stage, and I was like, in my eyes. Yeah. I said, ooh, that's my husband. They got me. I tried to, I tried to hit on him. I ain't gonna lie. Nah, I don't, homo. I love the man. Listen, I ain't gonna cry. This is what happened. So I see him on stage rapping. I was like, I wanna, you know, I wanna talk to him. So I was like, hey, you do music? And he was like, yeah. I was like, I wanna do a song with you. So we went to his mom's house. And I was trying to like flirt and all that stuff mm-hmm. with him. And he was like, I'm focused on God right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking for anything right now. So I, hey, I let it go. I was like, hey, cool. You know, the Bible says when a man finds one, when a man finds a woman, he finds a good thing. Mm-hmm. Three months later, he hit me up and he was like, hey, you want to go to Dennis? It's, it's about some music stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. So right. we get there. I'm like, we talking and he's just like, I'll be honest with you. I really do like you, but um, I just wanted to be sure that, you know, you were in God and that if me and you were going to do this together, that it was going to be a God thing. And from that day forward, we've been rocking with each other. That's wow. What's up. He wanted yeah. to make sure you were about it. That's good. Yep. He wanted so, to make sure about it, about it. Yeah. So, Mr. Moon Off. Man, uh, so it was October 16, 1987. Uh, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. I was just getting ready was, to be like, hey, like, you see me? I'm like. <laughs> yeah, he was leaning. Um, no, um, uh, came down here when I was like maybe eight years old. Um, we all lived in New York at the time. And we kind of figured, you know, since my auntie moved down here, mm-hmm. we might as well all migrate down here. Right. And ever right. since then, bro, like it's crazy because it's like a whole bunch of Puerto Ricans at the same time moved from New York down here. Yeah. That's how every it per- happens. Every person that I met from then on in is like, oh, you're New Yorkian? Yeah. Uh, New <laughs> yeah, York. Yeah, we know. It. Yeah. Um, but um, I came from a, pretty much a broken home. My dad, um, growing up down here, um, he got into a lot of weed, mm. a lot of paranoia. Mm. It wasn't really um, involved in my, you know, my life as a, as a child. Right. Um, just, you know, he was into his own thing, man. And I guess I was kind of like looking for a father figure at the time. And, it, you know, I was raised back in the day where you just come home when the street lights came on. That's you know what I'm saying? I was too. hanging out, yeah. met a couple friends or whatever. And, you know, we started, you know, they were into like drugs and all that, man. And and um, I, that's when I first started getting into like you know, drugs and all that. Like I, I like I didn't do drugs specifically, but right. hanging around that crowd. Right, right. Okay. right. Thank God, by the grace of God, I didn't. I never tried any drug in my life. Bro. That's awesome. But um, we probably. No, 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 just playing. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, just hanging out, man, and just hanging around the wrong crowd, and and uh, eventually, you know, my mom and my dad separated and got divorced and it was just me and my mom at the time right my sisters were already growing up they already got done with school um and it was just me and her um when we we first uh lived in this apartment um it's called the shack uh, Mm -hmm. john walker apartments Mm -hmm. and um I was about maybe 16, 17 at the time. I didn't know what what I really wanted with my life, but I know that my mom was a devout Christian. Mm-hmm. She's the type of person that would wake up at 5, 6 in the morning and just start praying. I would just hear worship music throughout the house. Wow. And that's what kind of like, I guess, my first encounter with Christianity or whatever. Um, 
um, I had a couple friends of mine that that um, I guess invited me to church um, through my mom. Right. And it was a is it was a, a youth group called Liquid, Living in Knowledge, Wisdom, Insight, Discipline. Okay. And then um, <laughs> uh, I met my uh, my then pastor, my youth pastor, Pastor Wolf. Um, he got me plugged into a whole bunch of like you know young people, you know, serving the Lord and all that. And this was at Fort Myers Christian Outreach Center. Right. So on Fowler. On Fowler. Yeah. Yeah. The old um, bowling alley, right? Is that what it was? Is near the old yeah, bowling yeah, alley. Right there. Yeah. So um since then, um, you know, I I was dealing with a lot of depression at the time because I would go to church, have fun, but I, I would come back home into, you know, the hood, you know what I'm saying? Living in a six I, I felt like my room was a prison cell. I was mm-hmm. living in a six by nine. It, you know, with a bed over here, and my mom was, you know, working all these hours trying to make ends meet, man. And um, I wasn't the type to really go out as much because I didn't really know a lot of people out there. So I got into a lot of depression, man, and to the point that one night I took a nine inch knife to my neck. Mm. And I said to myself, God, like, I don't know, like, what to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I don't want, I feel like I don't want to live no more because. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of details I missed right. that, with my dad beating on my mom and all that. Right, you've seen some stuff. I've yeah. seen a some lot of trauma. stuff, bro. So I said, God, if you know, I, I wanted, I'm going to go to church. You know, what I'm saying again, but if this doesn't happen, I'm just going to end it. You know, what I'm saying. Mm. So I had uh, a girl by the name of Rachel Dubray. She, I called her up one time, and this was a, a, a act of desperation, bro. Yeah. I said, Can you take me to church? And then they were having a service uh, one night. And um, by the end of the service, man, uh, I felt the conviction of the Lord, bro. I felt the Lord upon me, man. I said, I fully devote, give my life to the Lord at that at that moment, right? that day, bro. And um, since then, bro, I, how I started getting into the Lord was uh, I, I had this like little white Bible that they usually leave in hotel rooms. And mm-hmm. I would just yeah. read, yeah. be on that thing day and night, day and That's night. Crazy. Just reading scriptures, copying it down, trying to memorize scripture, bro. And it's like the Lord was really doing something in my life. And um, I've always loved hip hop. Um, I'm a big Nas fan. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not a big Nas fan now, you no, know what I'm saying? But, but, but he's your <laughs> influence. He's that's, influence. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that was my influence. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I didn't really know about any Christian hip hop music until. One day I came across the, um, I went to a, a Christian bookstore, Christ, Christ Center Christian bookstore, mm-hmm. yes. and uh, I heard about the cross movement. Oh, yeah. I love cross. I opened mm-hmm. up for them a couple times. Yeah. So the cross movement, um, the ambassador, I, I bought his album, Christology, and I'm like, yo, this is sick, bro. And um, I was living in the same place at the time with my mom. And now I have this whole, uh, like, I'm I'm starting to, to to start writing rhymes or whatever because that's what I, I wanted to do. Like even before then, I was rapping, listening to Nas, and right, kind of right. like trying to figure out his. Well, you're from and all the city that. too, right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So um, I'm beatboxing. It, it picture like a 12, 13 year old kid just beatboxing on the tables and just yeah. writing rhymes or, or whatever, man. Um, but um, there was one day after I got saved and all that, there was um, uh, I got in touch with Greg. Mm-hmm. And um, he heard about, uh, I was doing music at the time. I had yeah. a studio or whatever. And uh, it was called the Lions. They had a group called the Lions Lion Squad. Squad. That's the group I'm talking about, wow. that, the Paul Adato. It was yeah. Greg, Bridge, yeah. Judah, yeah. and Anthony yeah. Garcia. So we're in John, I'm in John Walker's. Next thing you know, um, you know, somebody said, they called me on the phone. Hey, we, want, we got a couple guys that want to meet you or whatever. I'm like, sure, man, cool. I, I had j- just had bought studio equipment, learning right. it and all that. I have that in my room. Next thing you know, four big dudes just came out of one car and showed up in the front <laughs> of my house. My mom, I think she was the first one who opened up right. the door. She's like, I don't know if she was scared or not. Right. Or it was going to get robbed or something. Bro. <laughs> but um, that's the first time I met uh, Greg Bridge. Um I forgot the other cats, man. But Judah and Garcia. Judah Anthony. and Garcia, man. Yeah. And um, you know, we I showed him my my studio, what I was doing or whatever. And um uh 
since then, I was uh, doing uh, recording a bunch of their tracks. Like um, I recorded a whole bunch of their songs, bro. And and then later, um, when Taking the City got um, started getting established and all that, um, they told me that that hey, you know what I'm saying? We're doing this ministry or whatever. I want I want you guys to be a yeah. part. I want you to be a part of it or whatever. And um, man, we did that for a while and. Then the cup of life opened up. I didn't really know about it, but they said uh, they were doing some events over there. And I'm like, you know what? I want, you know, I got connected with, uh, I think, Pastor Rao at the time that was running it. Mm-hmm. And uh, just fast forward, bro. There's so many yeah. details, bro. Yeah, that I'm I know. Trying it's to, like, oh. that's what I'm saying. It, it goes like, because there's, there's so, so much, much you want to tell, man. We're, we're, get... we're going back from like 07, 08, yeah. all the that's, way down. Uh, and that's fast forward. And so, in a nutshell, which as you can see, you know, if you're dealing with something out there, maybe suicide, homosexuality, whatever, mm-hmm. there, you know, uh, divorce, violence, drugs, whatever, you're talking to four people that have lived all of it, all yeah. of those yeah. things. And it shows you that it don't matter how you start the race, it's how you finish the race. Right, right. It, it ain't about what they told you. It ain't about what a music video told you. It ain't about what somebody on MTV told you or your school teacher or whoever. It's about what God says at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I, that's-